All right, um, I'll start. So first let's review um, what we did last week. Um, the problem we tried to solve is we want to find the minimum of this function. So this is our f. This is our f right here. Uh, this function right here is our f of x. So. And uh, uh, for our model problem, uh, like um, we have to make our problem easy to to be anal uh, to be uh, analyzed, uh, we restrict ourselves to have a Q that is greater than zero. So a matrix is greater than zero. It means uh, um, So for any, for any non-zero vector, okay? And we require we require um, Q to be uh, symmetric. So every single of its eigenvalue is real and we can analyze it. Um, by the setting, Okay, so we write, so this is f of x. By this setting, we know that the gradient of f of x is nothing but q of x subtract the b. So for its minimizer, uh, the gradient must be zero which means a minimizer must satisfies so the minimizer must satisfy gradient being zero so which is q of x equals b q times x equals b um, and this x star is our minimizer and moreover we know that So we compute the Hessian. So this is in the homework. Um, the Hessian of this quadratic function is just uh, the, the matrix Q. Okay. And it's greater than zero. This means it's convex. This function is convex. Okay. So this is our problem in one panel. Um, this is panel number one. Let's see if I uh, hit the record button. I did. Okay, great. Now let's look at a gradient descent. The gradient descent is we iteratively um, looking for the minimizer by the following uh, iterations, which is the next iterate is previous iterate subtract a number which is alpha k times the negative, I'm sorry, uh, subtract a number times the gradient. The reason is because the negative gradient is the direction this function decreases fastest. Okay. So this alpha k, uh, like we analyzed before, if we do a line search, once we do a line search, we will obtain a method called a steepest descent. The steepest descent is we do a line search so that we choose alpha k to be the arg minimum. Arg minimum, it means we take the minimum of a function and uh, we evaluate 
what is its minimizer. So we evaluate alpha greater than or zero, evaluate the arg minimum of this thing. Okay, so um, let, let me use uh, this alpha pk. Okay. So where where pk is just a negative gradient. Okay. At k iterate. So this is our this is our steepest descent. And uh, um, the intuition is we follow the negative gradient direction, but we do a further minimization. So we choose our step so that uh, along this line, we find the minimum possible function value, then we stop there, okay? So this is like, a, if we draw a picture, this is like, a, if we draw a picture, oops. So if this is a minimum, if this is X star and this is F, and f is zero here, and f is one here, f is two here, f is three here. So if we start here, okay, so if this is our x zero, then we just follow the gradient direction, negative gradient direction, sorry. So this is negative gradient at x zero. So, Let's say this is f equals 1.5. Then we stop whenever it intersect with some, you know, level curves of, uh, of this f. So this is steepest descent, and we have an explicit formula of it. So we derived we uh, we have. We have derived a formula of it, and the formula is PK transpose PK. So P sub K is the gradient at uh, uh, the kth uh, iterate. And divided by PK transpose QPK. And this formula will be our friend. So um, later on, we will see that. So today we'll learn a new method. It's called conjugate gradient. It's an upgraded version of that. And we'll see uh, this formula. So we'll have many formula in this form. Uh, so this formula is essentially our friend, okay? And we've learned that the convergence is linear, okay? Once we take uh, uh, that, uh, um, that uh, step size, the convergence is linear so that uh, uh, we'll have a linear convergence in that uh, the k plus one's iterate subtract the minimizer, which is the optimal. We take the norm, it's less than or equal to kappa minus one divided by kappa plus one. So once we take this step size, we have this linear convergence, okay? So, and where, ca where kappa is, uh, is defined by the maximum eigenvalue of Q divided by the minimum eigenvalue of Q. And, uh, um, And the convergence is very fast when kappa is near one, okay. But uh, when kappa is big, so this is actually slow. Okay. So to, uh,
to mo to to like uh, to to get rid of uh, um, this condition, let's say uh, to improve the convergence when kappa is big. Um, so we propose today our remedy to this problem when kappa is big. Okay. Um, so let's first motivate by discuss the geometric meaning of the steepest descent. So the steepest descent is we, uh, we essentially, we, we minimize, okay, so even though it's an arg minimum, but essentially we minimize this thing. Okay. And keep this in mind, keep this in mind. This is actually, this is actually um, our XK plus one. So it's, uh, um, this is our next iterate. So we do a line search so that our next iterate is a minimum along this search direction. So last time, not last time, I think uh, two lectures before on Wednesday, we derived um, the equation of this you take in derivative. Basically, this is the function. So we define a function phi uh, in this alpha. So this, uh, so we define a function uh, phi alpha, which is, uh, sorry. So I should say, um, we define a function phi alpha of k is, is this, this uh, function. And P, P of K is our negative gradient. Okay, so um, what happens is we have to let uh, basically, we solve for alpha, we do this, okay? And then we derive alpha. Um, but we haven't explained when we, during our solving for alpha, the equation we obtain, actually it has its geometric meaning. So let's rederive this guy just quickly. I mean, if, if we, if, if we take derivative use chain rule and we'll, uh, we'll get, uh, it's, uh, it's that thing above, okay. But in the middle, of deriving of this. So let's derive it again. When we take derivative of this phi of alpha, the f if we use chain rule, the out, the outer derivative is gradient of f evaluated at x k plus one, okay. So whatever the input is our k plus one theater. And then the chain rule with dot product, we dot product with, with alpha, uh, dot product with the input, we take derivative with respect to alpha, okay. So the outer, Outer derivative is that a gradient of evaluated at x k plus one, but the inner derivative is take risk, uh, take derivative with respect to alpha. We get p k. Okay. So this is uh, all right. So this uh, this implies that. This should be panel number five. PK is our gradient of F, but at uh, uh, the K theory. So this implies a 
for steepest descent. This is a negative gradient at the k theta rate. Okay, so we get rid of the negative sign because uh, this is zero. So what happens is we have this important geometric interpretation of steepest descent that is uh, um, the gradient. The gradient at the next iterate is orthogonal to the gradient at previous iterate. So let's look at, so this is, this is a gradient at k plus one the iteration. And this is a gradient at k the iteration. So let's let's use two functions to illustrate this thing. Six. If we have this geometric meaning, let's consider our f is, let, let's say n, so this n is two. So we just have like two variables, um, x equals x1, x2, and f equals, okay? f equals this simple function, and its minimum is achieved at zero, zero. So this is a, the simplest possible quadratic function in two dimension. And if we write it in the form of our problem, which I already erased it, which is uh, the function we all, always wanna uh, minimize is this guy. So, uh, okay. So let me, let me add a y by two here. So then it's one half um, x1, x2, one, one, x1, x2. It's, it's just uh, this simple thing. Um, it's x1, x2 times this identity matrix, then multiply with um, x1, x2. And here we, we, so this is our Q, right? Q is an identity matrix. It has two eigenvalue, lambda max equals lambda min is one, which means our condition number is one. What happens over there if we look at our rate of convergence? If we look at our rate of convergence, okay. Kappa is one, this is zero. What does this mean is we start, we let just this xk to be any number, any vector, okay? At next iterate, the error drops down to zero, which means it converges in single, in a single step. Let's illustrate why this is the case. If we draw the level curve, if we draw the level curve, if we draw the level curve of, of this F. So for example, this is F equals four, F equals three, F equals two, and F equals one. And in the center, it's F equals zero, right? We start at any point. Let's say we start at here, okay? The negative direction, I'm sorry, the direction of negative gradient points to the center, which is um, like where the minimum is achieved. So if we do a line search, what happens is this. So this is our negative gradient. If we do a line search, we find the minimum value along this line. 
But the minimizer, which is our X star, happens to be on this line. So we are lucky, okay. So if we do a line search, it converges in one step. Is this, uh, is this uh, clear? Good, okay. So th this, is, this, is, uh, this is kind of obvious because uh, our negative gradient happens to pass through. So this direction happens to pass through um, the minimizer, which means if we do a line search, we'll get to that minimizer. That's why it converges in one step. So now this is, this is a very good example, which is this. Now let's just change the problem a tiny bit. We'll see that why the stiffest descent is not a robust method. What I mean by robustness is we do not change the structure of the problem. We just change the coefficient of the problem. We'll find that the stiffest descent is not robust. So let's consider another F. Let's consider another F, let's say F is X one square uh, plus a thousand X two square. Why I'm saying what, I mean, the, um, we, we, it's easy to verify the minimizer is still zero, zero, right? So we take derivative, we get zero, zero. Structural wise, what do I mean by structure is this function is exactly the same class with this function. It, let, let, let's add, so let, let's still do this. Okay, so function wise, it's almost the same. It doesn't even have a cross term, okay? However, if we write it in this X, trans, X transpose Q, X form, we'll see this is uh, X1, X2, Q becomes one, 1,000 x1, x2. All right. So this is our Q. This is our Q. And this is a diagonal matrix. So lambda max is a thousand, but lambda minimum is one. And the condition number is a thousand. And if we apply the stiffest descent to this function, if we're unlucky, okay, so if we're unlucky, by unlucky, I mean, so if we don't have the lottery ticket so that our local minimizer happens to be in the direction we are searching, okay? So like this one, this one is at any point. It's in the direction of uh, our searching. But for this problem, it's perfectly possible that, uh, you know, the, the minimum is not in the direction we're searching. So let me draw the level curve of this function. Um, okay, so a thousand x, so x one should be, should be some, some here, and x two should be something here. Okay, so as we can see, um, if we take x one um, is one, and uh, x two is zero, we'll get uh, one, but. Uh, when we take x1 being zero, x2 must be very small so that uh, we get the same value. So it, it's like an ellipse. So basically if, if we let this to be one, we'll get an ellipse with major axis on uh, x1. So we'll have something like this. Okay. So this is like, uh, let's say this is f equals uh, three. F equals two and F equals one. Okay. So if we are here, if we start here, our negative gradient points to the minimizer, which is here. So that, that's what I meant. 
that we are lucky. Okay, so if we are lucky, the minimizer happens to be on the direction we're searching. However, if we're unlucky, for example, we start from something here. So if this is, if this is our x is zero, oh, then we're in trouble. So we'll, we'll, we'll do something like this. So here, and then we do here. And so we, we'll have this uh, very zigzagging. So on, on, on Wednesday, we'll test this uh, using steepest descent versus something uh, we we'll learned uh, on Wednesday, which is a, a conjugate gradient algorithm. If we apply the steepest descent, it converges like this, very slow. But like I said, structure-wise, structure-wise, these two problems are almost the same. Okay. Um, so how do we improve that? So this is the question. So how, um, so uh, four, okay. So let me check my uh, notes real quick. Okay, so, so the question is to how to improve uh, the steepest descent. So the answer is to use conjugate gradient, like uh, I said in the beginning of our class, which is a me new method uh, we learn. So, and we'll explain in a moment what is a conjugate. But in the, the actual algorithm, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it for the coding class on Wednesday, but uh, that's first. I mean, introduce the name. So conjugate gradient. So let me first tell you guys, um, what is the reception in our community? Let's say I'm a numerical analyst, computational mathematician. Well, what is the, so what is the reception of the conjugate gradient in the scientific computing community. So this is called a state of art. What does it mean by state of art? It, it means it's the best possible. Okay, so it's a state of art first order method. For convex function. It means it's the best possible. You cannot improve it. Um, anymore. So it's like the fastest possible for a convex function in the form of uh, the quadratic one. Um, so this is panel number eight. So the idea is simple. The idea is simple. So for step is the descent. So for steepest descent, we have we have these two are orthogonal. The gradient at uh, um, so this is steepest descent. The gradient at the next iterate is orthogonal to the gradient at uh, previous iterate. Okay. Conjugate gradient is something different. Conjugate gradient is, so let me use this notation, but 
without defining it, let me first use this notation first. So it's orthogonal, but in Q with our gradient of previous iterate. So this is CG. And now let's uh, learn what does it mean by uh, this orthogonal of a subscript with the Q. So the rest of the class will prove something uh, that's related to conjugate gradient and we'll leave the algorithm to Wednesday's class so that uh, we'll code it uh, in NumPy. And uh, I also will um, present like how do we use the SciPy optimized module to help you guys uh, solve some most difficult problem like a Rosenbrock function and we'll illustrate how does the CG improve the convergence like uh, significantly. And okay. Um, So orthogonality revisited. Um, let's first use some notation. So we say x dot y, which the textbook also uses um, x transpose y. So this is inner product, the dot product, whatever you like to say. So inner product or dot product of two vector. And sometimes you see, uh, textbook you're using. So I, I believe if you Google like Wikipedia, so it also uses this notation that is a parentheses X comma Y. Um, this also means the inner product of two vectors. And this is zero means these two vectors are orthogonal to one another. If in 2D, the geometric meaning is quite, is quite clear. The geometric meaning is just uh, it's just that these two vectors uh, of a uh, right angle. All right. So uh, the angle they form is of a right angle. So now, so for a Q matrix that is positive and it's symmetric, we just insert a Q everywhere and we'll get uh, the Q orthogonal. So. Keep this in mind, Q is symmetric. So this equals, um, this equals QX transpose Y. If we write this explicitly, this is uh, X transpose Q transpose, but Q transpose equals Q. So this is Q. So let me write this again. It's because Q transpose is Q, Q is symmetric. Okay. Um, and this equals, also we can write it as this way. So if this is happening, um, if instead of X dot with Y directly, we insert a Q in the middle, then this means okay.
So this means x is orthogonal uh, to y, but in the q direction. If we draw geometric, so depends on specific q, um, So x, y in two dimension, they are q orthogonal, they may not be real orthogonal, okay? So they may look like this. It depends on the eigenvalue of q. This angle, all right, is actually the ratio, not the ratio, but uh, um, so uh, it should be the tangent of the angle is the ratio of the eigenvalue of the two in 2D, okay? So now let's derive some of them. This is panel number nine. So this is panel number 10. Panel number 11. We, uh, we revisited the orthogonality. The next one is projection revisited. We've learned, we've learned in vector calculus how to compute projection. Projection is computed by the dot product. So, um, the formula we can refer to the uh, calculus textbook, but today we'll derive something uh, from ground up. Okay. So the, the problem is simple. We have a plane. Okay. So we have a plane S. And for simplicity, we uh, assume the zero vector is in S. Okay. So. Uh, so for simplicity, uh, we assume, so S contains the origin so that uh, a vector living on this uh, plane can be just, so this is a vector, okay? Um, then we can just, because the origin is on this plane, we can simply identify this vector by its end point. So for example, this is, uh, Let's say this is a vector x. So let me, let me use a vector v on this plane s, okay? And then given any, so given any, so for, for a vector that, that's not on this plane, for example, we may have some x here. And we basically, we want to compute its projection. So how do we compute its pro projection is, we basically, we project it to the plane, okay? And how do we project, um, so this is a projection. How do we project is we actually, we try to solve the following problem. So we try to solve this problem. Um, for simplicity, we add a square there. So it's easier uh, to take derivative, okay? So what happens here is, all right. 
So what happens here is from the geometric point of view, um, from the geometric point of view, if we project this X on this plane, this distance is the shortest. And we call this point the projection. So let's define this as our XK. So, um, and geometrically, this is achieved at y equals, so y equals x sub k, which is the projection of, um, of, of this x onto this plane s, okay? So we denote this as our xk here. So this xk is a vector. And uh, um, we want to derive a equation of this projection satisfied. All right. And we'll use, so instead of a calculus, in, so calculus just to define this, all of these, like using formulas. But today we want to derive it using the optimization technique we have learned. Okay. We want to solve uh, the minimum of this, right? We, we change the problem a tiny bit. We define, instead of we solve an n-dimensional problem, we change this to a one-dimensional problem again by introducing another function. And this function is, uh, um, Okay, um, so by the way, let me change this to, uh, let me change this to X sub K. Because this minimum is achieved at X sub K, it means, so if we perturb, so if we perturb, By perturb, we mean we change this by a tiny bit. For example, we change t times a direction of v and for a v in this s. So we perturb this xk a little bit, but we're still on this plane. And Okay, so it should be, it should be bigger than this, because the projection has a minimum distance. Okay, what, what this tells us is actually G of T has a minimum, actually has the minimum at t equals zero. Okay, so, so we do the old trick. We take derivative and we uh, set it to be zero. So what does that mean? This means 
g prime of zero is zero. We need to take a derivative of this function. If we write down it explicitly, if we write down it explicitly, this is this is a this is norm square. Okay. Um, so what happens is what happens is if we take derivative of the outer. So uh, let me illustrate. This is like. This is like this, but we change this Q to be identity matrix. So this is uh, this is this is x squared. So the gradient of the outer function is like a taking gradient of this. If we take gradient of this, we'll get a Q times X. So now it's I times X, all right? But uh, we have a one half in front and we, we get a, a, so this means we have just two X vector. Actually it's two identity, identity times X. So it's x, two, two times x vector. So now let's look at this. Chain rule again. So now let's take the derivative, the gradient, which is outer function, we'll get two times xk plus tv subtract x. evaluated at t equals zero. So this is the outer function. This is a gradient. So this is a gradient of uh, this outer function. And then we take a derivative of the inner function. Keep this in mind, we're taking derivative with respect to t. This is a constant vector, nothing to do with t. The only has something to do with t is this v. So V is some arbitrary vector on S and this has nothing to do with T. So if we take chain rule, we take the inner derivative, we'll get to this V, which means we'll have this equation. Okay, so now we're almost done. This is panel number 13. When t is zero, this term is gone. This is x k subtract uh, subtract x, and we can uh, factor out a two. So we'll get uh, and we've derived actually a linear system for the projection must satisfies. That is the projection S of X subtract X dot product with any vector on this plane, it must be zero. I mean, geometrically it makes sense. because its projection is this vector. So once this X subtract this projection, we'll get this perpendicular line to the plane. But this is interpreted at uh, like arbitrary dimension. Okay. I mean, even though the figure is drawn in 3D, but uh, but this is the equation it satisfies. So on Wednesday, we'll quickly derive 
So this is orthogonal. This is what orthogonality actually means. So on Wednesday, we'll derive what happens if we insert a matrix Q in it, okay? And then we will we'll have our conjugate gradient very naturally be present. So that's it for today. And on Wednesday, we'll do a remote, so which we'll learn how to code conjugate gradients. So that's it for today.